After six months of not having been able to travel, it is my first time to fly on a plane again. Although I really wish to be back home in the Philippines, I just have to explore more of the country I now call home. So I decided to hop on an adventure to Scotland. Honestly, I still feel anxious about traveling, but I really needed this relief from the stress at work and with the world in general. Good thing I have my friends with me to keep me company. Well, 2020 has brought about a lot of changes to our lifestyle and the way we cope with difficult situations. I can say it is definitely a tough year for most of us and the world has become even crazier so we all need to find our way of coping during the, these unprecedented and uncertain times. This pandemic has changed the way people live these days and it has taken a toll in one of the largest global sector, the tourism industry. Traveling these days is really different from how we've all been used to with the addition of safety protocols, which I highly encourage everyone to abide with. Personally, it drastically rotated my life in a full 360 degrees when my free-spirited and adventurous soul went from traveling every chance I get to becoming a home buddy. I'm blessed to have been given the chance to travel again. So where else should we go? Well, to none other than in one of UNESCO World Heritage Site locations, the city of Edinburgh, known for its tradition of men wearing kilt and playing bagpipes. From Bristol Airport, it is an hour plane ride to Edinburgh, the capital city of Scotland. It is the second largest and most populous city next to Glasgow. It is very easy to access the city with its well-connected routes to any location. Transportation is very convenient with options such as buses, trams, trains, and cabs. While most of us are unable to travel, let me now take you on a virtual tour to this beautiful city so we can all have one thing to look forward to once COVID-19 is over. Enjoy! The best place to appreciate the city is by stationing yourself in the main street and shopping strip of town known as Prince's Street. This is where you get to see the imposing presence of the Edinburgh Castle with its prominent location on top of a dormant volcano, giving the area a very scenic backdrop. This is the Princess Street Gardens lying in the shadow of the Castle Rock. This used to be a lake called Norlock, which was man-made as part of a medieval defense, but was later drained in 1770s. And in 1821, this garden is open to the public. One of the most prominent architectural marvel of this garden is the Ross Fountain. Installed in 1872 and had a more recent restoration in 2018, this water feature with its gold and turquoise color is a must-see for most tourists. On the east side of the garden is where Waverly Mall, with its Waverly train station, as well as Balmoral Hotel is located. One thing I love about this city is that it is very walkable where everything you need to see is just a stone throw away. Mm, or maybe a bike ride away? Just behind Princess Street is a long esplanade with Edinburgh Castle on one end and stretching as far as the Holyrood House Palace. This thoroughfare in the Old Town is called the Royal Mile, as this is almost exactly a mile connecting two royal edifices. This is a must visit as shops and museums line up this historic walkway, such as the Cannonball House, Outlook Tower and Camera Obscura, Scottish Storytelling Centre, Museum of Childhood, Parliament Square, St. Charles Cathedral, the Queen's Gallery leading to the Palace, and many other places of importance. <laughs> the next street adjacent to the Royal Mile is where you can find the coffee shop Elephant House where J.K. Rowling penned the Harry Potter books. Just a few steps away from the cafe is the statue of Edinburgh's Hachiko, 
Greyfriar Bobby, a Sky Terrier who for 14 years guarded the tombstone of his owner. Talk about true devotion. Right opposite the Greyfriar Scarecard is a place for devotees of arts and sciences, the National Museum of Scotland. Start from the roof deck to get a good view of the city and work your way down to the ground floor where the tombstone of Mary Queen of Scots can be found. There is so much more inside this museum, just make sure you don't miss the conjoined building which houses an array of science experiments and a few taxidermic wonders. For sure you will spend more than half of the day surveying the meticulously curated pieces in this marvelous museum. Plus, entrance is free! If you are more of a plantito or plantita, then you surely wouldn't want to miss the Royal Botanic Gardens of Edinburgh, a world-renowned scientific center for botany, which houses thousands of species of flora sprawling in 7,000 square meters of land. Also, they have glass houses with controlled temperature all year round that grow tropical plants. They also have an herborium which displays all medicinal plants you can ever think of. And yes, entrance is also free. Well, except for the glass houses, but it sure is worth it if you have a green thumb or mm, even heart. If you don't like seeing plants sheltered in large domes for science sake, then you might want to head up north of Edinburgh and nestle in the great outdoors in the heart of Cairnworms National Park which is home to some of the world's most loved yet endangered species of both flora and fauna. There are over a hundred trails you can tread lightly in the UK's largest national park. This forest contains a unique range of landscapes, wildlife, habitats, and people. There are a lot of great areas for camping you can choose from in this 4,528 square kilometers of wildlife haven. This experience is one for the books, as I slept in a tent in a forest where reindeers roam freely amidst the 4 degrees such as temperature. I'm here in Scotland and it's my first time to do camping. I'm inside my tent and it's 4 degrees outside in my sleeping bag and my duvet. Luck was on my side on that camping trip as I just met two strangers who gladly took me in and had me join them in that adventure. However, if you can't find locals to drive you three hours from the capital to the park but you really want to trek, then fret no more. Edinburgh is endowed by nature with a very unique topography where a hill of volcanic nature rises above the city to a height of 822 feet. Around a two-hour ascent to behold an excellent panoramic view of the city and beyond, Arthur's seat fabled to be the site of King Arthur's Castle Camelot is best for hill walkers. They say the best view comes after the hardest climb is but a cliché once you've been to Calton Hill. If you have a penchant for amazing panoramic views but you can't be bothered to walk long distances, then this Instagrammable location is best for you. Just a 10-minute walk from the city center, Calton Hill boasts of several iconic monuments and buildings. In the lower portion of the hill lies the old Royal High School, the Robert Burns Monument, and the Political Martyrs Monument. And on top of the hill is the City Observatory for astronomical observations. The National Monument, a Scottish memorial to those who died fighting in the Napoleonic Wars. The Nelson Monument, a commemorative tower in honor of First Viscount Horatio Nelson. And the Dougald Stewart Monument, in memorial of Scottish philosopher Dougald Stewart. Due to its strategic location, this spot is where photographers take the best pictures of this beautiful city. Now if pictures aren't enough, you can head to the Scottish National Gallery to find 
true masterpieces of art with its display of Scottish paintings as well as international treasures from Paul Cezanne, Claude Monet, Paul Gauguin, Tishan, Vincent van Gogh, even including Raphael and Leonardo da Vinci. I literally cried as staring at their works of art, especially when it's free for everyone to admire. Another focal point in your visit in Edinburgh is no other than the official residence of the British monarch in Scotland, the Palace of the Holyrood House. This is a working palace with fully equipped kitchen and functional rooms and amenities. Though a ticket to get inside is a bit expensive, it is worth every penny to see how the royalties live then and now. Hello everyone, welcome to my house tour. So this is the, the entrance to my house. Welcome, welcome. With everything that is happening in the world, I'd say Scotland is always a good idea. I hope you have been transported to this lovely destination even while at the comforts of your own home. I'm sure you now have Edinburgh in your travel list, but for now, let us all keep safe and healthy. Stay at home and dream of better days to come when we all can travel again. Thank you for watching. Sending lots of love to all. Bye everyone.